Hello, and welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thank you for tuning in and joining me in my exploration of the wide world of pens. And you see a classic example rotating in front of you. Can you guess what pen it is? You probably may guess a lot of different pens because this is a classic design. It's a Jinhao X350. Yeah, it's been a fair number of reviews on the pen. So we're going to try to have a little bit of a different look at the pen. The Chris Rapp 52 view. Show it to you and you can decide whether this is a pen that you would like. Classic black and gold. I will use the word classic quite a bit in this review. My pen friends are looking at it and going, oh, it's a classic pen. So with that, we will dive in. So when you first pick up the pen and hold it, it becomes very apparent it's a metal pen. It has that kind of metal weight to it. And there's a number of pens that have been made over the years with a usually a brass body that's coated with a lacquer. And Jinhao has also been doing that style for a while. But I think the X350 is their return to classics. Uh, Wassie Squirrel would like this pen. Just classic black and gold. The cap comes off in a little over one and a half turns. And we'll see that Jinhao number six nib. It's a nice two-tone nib. We all wish they would get rid of that 18 kgp, but you know it might work in marketing in some countries, and who knows? Just your standard injection molded plastic feet on the other side. So the pen fits well in your hand. It's not a big pen, and it's fairly light without the cap, and as one might expect based on this design. It posts pretty securely. It does add a fair amount of weight to the pen. I think that caps about half the weight. We'll show you what those weights are. And it is secure. So if you like to post, this pen would work for you. Or if you don't like to post, this pen may work for you. It is about as short as you want to get. But then it's in the small pen category. And since it's a classic design, we'll unscrew the section. And there's a little resistance there because of that nice uh, rubber O-ring there. And we'll see a cartridge or converter. This has a converter. It comes with a converter, as most every Jinhao pen does. That is it in this way. I guess a fit and finish is very good. Converter fits uh, nice and securely. Nothing fancy with the converter, but they work. And that's all that really matters. So what ink am I going to put in here? We're going to compare it to some other pens, which you might find interesting. Stay tuned. So when I bought this pen on Timo, as part of their promotion to me, I got it because I think it's great in this Jinhao tube. Fits well, protects the pen, and they included two cartridges. It's always nice. Now I have a few Jinhao tubes. Don't know really what I'm going to do with them, but it's a great way to store pens and keep them safe. And also, if you want to send them to somebody. So, this ink called out to me. I don't have it in a pen right now. It's part of that Tropical Fish series from Trommel. And it does have some interesting green glitter in it. It's fairly dark blue. Bottle's been sitting for a while, but if we shake it up enough, that glitter will go into suspension and will fill the pen. Here's the ink on the paper towel from wiping off the section and wiping off the top of the bottle. It's definitely a very, very dark ink. I would put it in the blue-black category or black-blue category. It has a nice subtle little glitter to it, which just gives it a little bit of dimensional character. <laughs> 
So I've been writing with this X350 for about a week. It's been in a few letters that I've written. It's a fairly consistent writer. Definitely a fine line. Uh, the nib has a little bit more feedback than I'm used to from uh, Jin Hao number no. 6 nibs. But it does lay down a really nice patch of ink. This is Trammel Alphonsine ink. As you can see, that line is very consistent. The nib has a slight little bounce to it. And yes, you can squeeze out a little bit more ink if you put some pressure on it, but not something you're going to do in regular writing. Overall, I give the nib a thumbs up. So here we have the X350 partially disassembled. I could pull the nib and feed out of that nib collar, but no reason to do that. I flushed this. The flow was good. Just your standard Jin Hao converter. Nothing fancy. They work. You know, all the parts are made very well. Fit and finish is good. You know, the section is uh, made out of brass. And it has that enamel coating like the cap and barrel. Let's go into dark mode and look inside the cap. Here we have the pen and muted sunlight. And yes, it's just your classic black and gold pen. Looking inside the cap, we see a plastic liner, and there appears to be like a brass nut there that holds in the finial and the clip. It's a classic design on every level on this pen. And you got your plastic threads there, which is fine for uncapping and capping the pen. So the first comparison is to the X750 and X450, which have been around for a long, long time, come in an extreme variety. You know, here's a matte black finish, and here's a nice kind of like uh, veined finish. And there's a question about whether the X350, which is only in black and gold now, could come in black with silver trim, or come in a variety of colors. Who knows what Jin Hao has in mind for this pen. One would expect that the model will evolve over time. The other thing that Jin Hao is good at doing is the cap band on all these three is engraved with Jin Hao on one side and on the back side is engraved with the model number. We all like that. Makes it easy for us to say what the model is. And obviously, in the distant future, archaeologists will also find that to be a good thing. So on cap, they also have a lot of similarities. You know, Gino's not one to break the mold in their design. This is a smaller, more concave section. This is a very classical design section. And again, the word classic is used. And this is that triangular section with cutouts which also is on the X850, and certainly not a pen that I'm in the mood to try. All of these have number six nibs. These have all different nibs in it. This is a special attempt at a flex nib with cutouts. Here's a uh, foodie style with a nice bent up. But as, as you can see, the design is very similar with the scroll work and the Jin Hao chariot on these two and that 18 kgp. So I watched some reviews of the pen just to get an idea and make certain I didn't miss anything in my review, and I enjoy watching pen reviews. So nobody really has compared this X350 to the Pilot Custom Heritage 74, and here's the 91, which is basically a 74 with flat ends. Pilot did the same thing that Sailor did in making the models of pens with either the bullet nose rounded or the flat ends. The Rhodian trim on the 91 is very nice and the 91 was an early review of mine and I called it the perfect pen and it still is. X350 is actually a little smaller than the 74. I don't think anybody would call the 74 a big pen. So once you take the cap off, uh, one thing you'll notice is the nib on the Jin Hao is in good size number six. This is more similar to a number five that's on the 91 and uh, 74. This is a beautiful music nib. These two nibs are solid gold nibs, 14 karat nibs. So that's one of the differences. 
And also there's a substantial difference in price. The Pilot pens are definitely more expensive. The other thing to note, these are injection molded plastic, precious resin, however you want to describe it, and this is metal. So the feel is different, the weight distribution is different. But again, this is a, about a $10 pen, and these are over $100, so we're just comparing them aesthetically today. One of the other things these three pens share in common is they have standard, very classical designed uh, sections here. This one flares out a little bit more on the pilots, and here they just put a little metal ring at the bottom of the section or top, depending upon your frame of reference. And of course we have these metal threads here on the Jin Hao versus plastic threads on the two pilots, and there's also plastic threads in the cap of both of the pilots. It's a rhodium nib, two-tone nib, and a gold nib. So now we've come near the end of the video review, and we're going to show you some dimensions of this X350. So overall, I like the pen more than I expected. And the other interesting thing is when this is sitting on my desk with all my other pens, some very colorful, some very unique, this pen stands out for its classic lines, its classic look. I give Jin Hao thumbs up for deviating a little. You look at the Centennial 100s and the 82s and all those other colorful pens that they have. This one is just your classic black and gold pen. And it's a decent size, not too big, not too small. That Goldilocks size of pens. So we're going to do some final writing and say bye-bye. The first thing we're going to do is thank all of you for watching. I hope this video finds everyone safe, healthy, and happy, enjoying your pens, putting down some ink, exploring the amazing wide world of pens. With that, we've reached the end of this video. My writing gets small because it's a fine nib. And we will say bye. Consistent writer. Good pen.